A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you. Let us be attentive. After the wise men had left, the angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph with the command, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you otherwise. Herod is searching for the child to destroy him. Joseph got up and took the child and his mother and left that night for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Once Herod realized that he had been deceived by the wise men, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys, two years old and under in Bethlehem and its environs, making his calculations on the basis of the dates he had learned from the wise men. What was said through Jeremiah the prophet was then fulfilled. A cry was heard in drama, sobbing and in loud lamentations. Rachel bewailing her children, no comfort for her since they are no more. But after Herod's death, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt with the command, Get up, take the child and his mother, and set out for the land of Israel. Those who had designs on the life of the child are dead. He got up, took the child and his mother, and returned to the land of Israel. He heard, however, that Archelaus has, had succeeded his father Herod as the king of Judea, and he was afraid to go back there. Instead, because of a warning received in a dream, Joseph went to the region of Galilee. There he settled in a town called Nazareth. In this was what, uh, what was said through the prophet was fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. Glory be to you, O Lord, glory be to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christos Rajdaitse, Christ is born. With our liturgy, readings, tropars, the songs, we conclude the strict time after Christmas. We still celebrate the Christmas season, but when we will be reading, singing the tropars, the songs which are dedicated to concrete feasts, and in particular today we speak about Christmas, we are concluding this day with a saint well known in Ukrainian Malanka, or in English, Venerable Melanie of Rome. We hear this second part of the gospel, so-called infancy stories, related by Matthew. Matthew has, in his two chapters, first two chapters of the gospel, seven prophecies fulfilled about the Messiah about the Redeemer. Seven, it's a plentitude. And today's story reminds a bit chunk, a bit portion from the Old Testament. Joseph, you remember Joseph of Egypt, the one who had been sold by his brothers and then became well known to the Pharaoh and becomes Pharaoh's right hand distributing and calculating what do they need to collect enough food for seven years of famine. You remember that he was dreaming. He was seeing in a dream what is going to happen. And we have Joseph, the husband of Mary, receiving an information from the angel how to act. 
the words said by the prophet about his son, God's son, who is delivered from the slavery in Egypt. And of course, scholars, Jewish scholars say that this beloved son is Israel. And today we hear the revelation and the deeper understanding that in Jesus Christ, the beloved Son of God, we all are really redeemed from the bondage, not of the people, but of evil, but of death. And Matthew says to his listeners and his readers, look, this is the only begotten Son of God, his beloved one, and he is going out of Egypt to redeem all of us. The third part of today's pericope talks about ferocious King Herod, who is afraid to lose his kingship. And he kills the male kids, male boys, up to two years old. We can find similar stories, not probably connected with the power, but the stories recently we had in the Sandy Hook that the boy comes into the elementary school. There are different stories what not just the psychological state of mind, instability, or some kind of problems are causing very irreversible things in life. There are many questions, why? But when we hear this fulfilling of the prophet Jeremiah that the Rachel is bewailing and lamenting, this little portion talks about the hope. Because Rachel was bewailing the Israelites who were resettled into the Babylonian captivity. They were leaving the country in order to be, to live in the other country, to forget the language, their religion, and their ancestry. And there was hope afterwards because they came back to their own land. And today we hear there is a hope because the Savior is born, because there is a truth, there is a judgment, final judgment at the end, God's one. In this special season, let us be grateful for the gifts, all the gifts we receive from each other, not just material, but the gift of one another. Let us be sure that God has a great plan for all of us. He never forgets us. He again shows his visible sign of love in his Son. In a moment of despair, let us look at the icon of the birth of God. The God who is so tiny that we can keep him on our palms of our hands. The God who is at the same time powerful, that he creates heaven and earth. Amen.